Sooner Scoop HD. All right, um, sorry if I'm late. You know, if we're on schedule or Mike's acting like he's treating me like I'm late. So uh, I don't feel bad, though. Um, that's supposed to be funny, but I don't. <laughs> no, uh, well, that was really fast. That went really fast. Uh, a special day uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, most of all, we, we did a lot of things for the first time uh, today. A lot of players experience uh, things for the first time. I'm super thankful uh, for the fans today. They were they were outstanding. Um, our walk of champions and the energy in the stadium when we kicked off was really special. Um, no surprise. Uh, thought our guys were really, um, for the most part, we played a really clean game on both sides of the ball. Uh, substitutions, had, you know, we had uh, too many penalties um, uh, pre-snap, but really uh, proud of the, the players and the coaches. Um, seemed like dog years many times. In some ways, it went by really fast the last nine months, and then in many ways, it seemed like dog years. Uh, it's like, when are we going to get a play, uh, a game? But uh, everything has its time, and I thought our, uh, our, I thought our coaches and players really um, showed that they were prepared and um, thought we complemented each other really well, particularly in the first quarter. We really um, got off to a great start together, and, and that's what you got to do. And uh, this is a place, this stadium has been a place um, that can do that to people. And um, I think that we have the best winning percentage in all of college football home field over the last 20 plus years. And so that doesn't just happen by accident. The environment matters. And today we had a wonderful environment. You know, we beat uh, a well coached football team, and uh, Dana loves his team. And they, uh, a, a bowl team that had a lot of experience with a, you know, a veteran quarterback and an aggressive defense, you know, that we're going to uh, attack and uh, make you earn things. And, and we did exactly that, you know, rush for almost seven yards of carry uh, on offense and established the line of scrimmage there in a dominant way. And on the other side of the ball, uh, again, lines of scrimmage uh, under one yard of carry for the day and a team that, uh, arguably, the offensive line is probably their best coached position on the team, and uh, the emphasis to run the football uh, that uh, they they put on their offense. So, really proud of our guys. That's the challenge going into the game, uh, and really for us as a program, what we want to be about in moving forward as we develop, you know, identity and uh, the standards of this program, offense and defense, is to. And we're certainly not there. But if we're going to be a championship caliber, caliber football program, we've got to win that the line of scrimmage consistently. And so, you know, in the first game, you know, we were able to do that. And um, so really uh, excited about about that. And, and again, I thought that um, you know, it was really cool. We had seven guys start their first game. And out of our starting 22, uh, Ethan Downs, Dylan Gabriel, Tyler Guyton, Jeffrey Johnson, Jordan Kelly, McCabe Nator, and uh, Danny Stutzman. So five of them, or four of them rather, were uh, transfers. Three of them uh, were guys that were here. It's crazy Danny Stutzman didn't start the game, but I know he's just a freshman last year, but man, he's a good player. And um, again, no turnovers. Uh, again, we, you know, we, that was a, that's a huge goal for, for us as a, as a program. We want to, uh, we watch uh, on Tuesdays. Watch every team in uh, college football that's in the in the top ten in the country on turnovers and and uh, that's forcing the turnovers and and have the best turnover margin. And uh, man, we need to be that team, one of those teams, and uh, that uh, that's on the plus side of that. And whether you know, I think Nevada was one, and Coastal and Boise. And Cincy, those were four of the, of the top ten teams. And uh, we need to be that, you know, be opportunistic, be aggressive, and protect the football. It's all about the ball on offense and on defense, man. It's attacking it and being in the right place and playing with aggressiveness and sureness. And, and that's really what I, I saw today as a team that played, uh, again, with, with purpose and precision um, uh, for a good part of the day on both sides of the ball. And, um, and really, at the end of the day, as we told the team, it's this game. And, and again, UTEP's got a, a good-looking a good football team uh, in their league. 
Uh, it's a bowl team and a team that's got some veterans back. And, uh, you know, this game at the end of the day was going to be about Oklahoma reestablishing, uh, you know, the soul and the spirit of this program, our standards of this program. And moving forward, again, you know, really focused on how we do what we do, not just what we, we play football, uh, but how we do what we do is, was what we wanted uh, anybody that was tuning in to that game to see. And uh, playing with, you know, incredible, incredible effort and energy uh, from start to finish. So for the most part, again, thought that we did that. And um, with that, I'll open it up. For questions. Did you you waited a long time? You showed great patience being head coach. Did anything catch you by surprise from the time you woke up this morning to to now when you walked in here? Um, I wouldn't say by necessarily by surprise. Again, I've got a good staff around me that's nonstop, you know, trying to educate me. I ask a lot of questions. I'm not afraid to ask. I'm not. You know, I've just always been that way, this guy. And then, you know, the guy next to you is like, come on, will you, then we're trying to get over this. And I'm always asking the questions. I want to know why or what. And um, I spoke with Coach Sweeney this morning. So we were joking around. I'm like, hey, you know what? Uh, hey, anything you think y'all need to know as a, as a head coach, uh, game day, like I'm calling him in the last, you know, before, two hours before kickoff or whatever. But he's just, uh, and Coach Stoop stopped in during the week and he's just coming by to fist bump and, so I'm trying to always find out, you know, from people that have um, done it at the highest level. Certainly Matt Wells I have on staff, but I utilize all three of those guys this week, you know, and, and I have uh, for, you know, several months, you know, just people that, you know, mentors and people that are doing what I want to do, you know, and have had the kind of success that I want to have. And uh, so I'd be negligent, in my opinion, if I didn't ask. So uh, nothing really. Um, I like being in having game control and uh, having you know a kind of offense that we do that can put pressure on an opponent. And uh, but it was really fun for me today to try to sit back and listen and and in some ways stress free uh, at times very much stress free different kind of stress and things that from a leadership standpoint that I need to be there for everybody. So that was really a focus for me today and I thought. Uh, our staff uh, did a great job, but most importantly, our players, um, a tremendous amount of buy-in and engagement. You know, this is, as I told them uh, this morning, uh, this is one of the most committed teams I've, I've been a part of. And I don't take that for granted. And, and I will call it out in a minute if, it, if it's not what it's supposed to be. But these guys have been, um, from the moment that, that, you know, we said go in December, have uh, bought into what we've asked them to do and, and have not questioned it at any point in time, which I was surprised. I really felt that there would be some whatever it is, you know, there would be some pushback. But our guys have been just terrific um, in, in buying into what we ask them to do. So I uh, really appreciate them, very thankful for them. You've been part of some great football teams. I guess it's eight or nine in the national championship game. Do you, out of this game, do you have a sense of how good, what the upside is for this team? Um, I really, I, you know, that's a great question, but I don't. I think that we're going to develop that identity as the season goes along. I told the team all the great things that we just accomplished and there'll be plenty of things that we have to uh, correct off of the tape. I wanted them to enjoy this one. But on Monday, we're going to strip this thing back down to the studs and start over again. And that's what the, that's what the great programs can do. Uh, player driven, coach driven, everybody having a sense of urgency and desperation about starting over, no matter what happened. Uh, no matter how you played, you got to start completely over, all the way down to the foundation, and and do it again this week. And as you go along, what happens? It's a, and if you have success, it's hard because people want to put one hand on the wheel and relax, because everybody's going to tell you how great you are or how the more successful you are. And then on, if you're not doing great, or again, it's just hard to sustain having competitive stamina. That's a very difficult thing to have. You don't have it in a bottle. Okay, you, you've got to be committed to a process and how you play and compete at a really high level, and it's a very hard thing to do. Now, winning is hard enough. Now, winning consistent, consistently is even harder. So, you know, the tell of that tape will be, you know, uh, told over the course of time. 
and um, but I love the leadership on this team and the buy-in and the commitment has been there uh, they've done everything we've asked so um, I'm not doubting them now but the, the test of time is going to tell you worked in some of the backups look like early I guess did you plan on doing that because of the heat just go or you just confident those guys can get the job done yeah confident um, confident in what we've seen on the on the practice field really be honest we wanted to play more guys I wish we would have um, I think we played 68 guys and um, give or take I really wish we would have played a few more guys but um, I, I, I do think that at certain positions we've shown that we've got uh, some competitive depth there Brent, you talked about, in answer to John's question, that you talked to Dabo a couple hours before the game and give you any last minute advice. He is so awesome. Like, he is so positive and so happy. Uh, it just uh, is a breath of fresh air for me. You know, I'm, I'm a little more stoic sometimes and not quite as uh, happy. And, uh, but no, it was, it was actually just cool to connect with him on game day. And, uh, and now he's giving me advice on. Um, you know what to do and what not to do and uh, you know he has a unique way to, to um, kind of free you up and um, and just a great trusted friend a very selfless person uh, I know he was on the phone with with coach Elliott uh, who had his you know opener today as well against Richmond so uh, just you know I think I think it would for me it was a reminder to me just lucky to have um, friends uh, you know to me, that's ultimately what living looks like. You know, if you can put them on, you know, one, two hands, you know, people you can call your dear friends, like they care about you, um, and you're a lucky, you know, person. So that's really, you know, really, he, he just gave me a shot of encouragement. Um, and I really was just calling him, texting, hey, what else do I need to think about, you know? And uh, actually, he, he called me, but. Um, it was good to connect with him. What about your pass rush today? What would you think about it? I thought it was good. You know, I, th I thought our coverage and our pass rush played hand in hand. We we talked about that a lot. Uh, you know, playing what good coverage looks like. And, and hey, when we call these certain ones, I promise you that quarterback's holding the ball. He's not going to throw it on time. So I thought our guys, and, and, and they max protect some, so the guys had to have um, – uh, a lot of fight to them because it's at many times it was seven on three in protection and or seven on four and it's hard to get there but if they're going to get three guys out and you can get under and over all the eligibles um, you have an opportunity to make some disruptive plays and so I liked the uh, how we complemented each other in the in the coverage and the in the pressure up front. But those guys, I thought they did a good job. I think Todd and uh, uh, Miguel put together a really good pass rush plan and, and really equipped those guys. And then our guys, you know, went out and executed, uh, you know, what we wanted them to do. Yeah, Reggie Grimes had three career three. high, two and a half sacks, right? Uh, so. Yeah, we got a bunch of great ones. We had uh, Casey Kelleher played in his 53rd career game, set an OU record for long snappers, broke the previous record by Wesley Horky, and Deshaun White made his 37th uh, start of his career. Um, we had uh, uh, Dylan Gabriel thrown a touchdown pass in all of his 27 career games. That was a great one. How about Gavin Freeman? We've been talking him up. We've been talking him up. First touch of his collegiate career, touchdown. Isn't that great? I like that. Isn't that a great story? That's like a great story. We'll talk about that because he's a legacy guy with his dad mm -hmm. right here and, and choosing to bet on himself as a walk-on. What does it mean? To what a great way to say it. You know, he chose to bet on himself. He had opportunities to go to a lot of spots, and I love He's been super low maintenance, uh, really humble, but he's wide open every day. And um, and he's fearless. He's You know, you saw that play. He's somebody about – put him together like an accordion out there. They hit him so hard and he just bounced right off, stiffed armed another dude. And then, you know, a couple series later, he's down running down on the kickoff team. Just, uh, you know, he's he's a special dude. I'm really excited to see where he goes, um, but thankful uh, for him, you know, believing and betting on himself uh, for sure. Eric Gray had his first 100 yard game here as a Sooner. Um, he also had a couple of catches for, for 33 yards. Bowman uh, and Stutzman both had nine tackles. Both of them had two PBUs, and uh, and Danny in his first start also had a, a had a hurry. I uh, thought the defense was pretty good on third and fourth downs, almost seventy percent. 
successful on third and fourth downs. And um, again, uh, defensively had uh, six sacks and nine tackles, you know, for loss. I thought um, really proud of, I uh, love watching him play. Uh, Braden Willis had two touchdowns. And uh, and he's uh, he's a he's a neutralizer. You know he's a lead blocker on a couple of the other touchdown runs from uh, a couple of the running backs. He just you know buried guys. And uh, he's got a great physical presence to him, and incredibly accurate. Can you know uh, stretch the defense. So again, like I said, we uh, both sides of the, of the ball and our lines of scrimmage was really really strong. And, um, and there were a lot of you know first. Uh, superlatives. Gentry Williams with his first uh, pick. Reggie, you know, he had two and a half sacks more than he had, the, you know, in, in his career. R. Mason Thomas uh, had his first career half sack. So a lot of cool things that happened out there today that I thought, you know, for the first time, you know, just, you know, kind of cool to do that here as a, you know, from an opener standpoint. And again, I, I really liked one of my favorite things was, um, and like I said, the, the defense coming back and the looking at the second half uh you know the second half we came out and we go three and out and we get a fourth down stop and then we had a, a scramble uh, the guy worked free on a third and long and uh we led to a field goal and then we come back out and three and out and then we had a pick and uh, so, so to me I'm, I'm trying to we're trying to establish a mindset and an attitude and 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 not being satisfied and being hungry and putting a foot down and slamming the door no matter who goes in, you know, and uh, to play to a standard, compete to a standard, uh, and, you know, feel like there's there's signs there that, uh, you know, that, that certainly had happened today. And, uh, you know, want to continue to build on that. Well, you look at the offense, Brian, you look at 11, first 11 plays, six explosive plays. Can you talk about the aggression of the offense and just the demeanor of both Dylan and Jeff going into this offense? Yeah, just very confident. Um, again, Jeff's a great play caller and does a great job with some play design. And uh, and Dylan's again incredibly accurate. He's experienced in the system, so uh, you know they can put a lot of pressure on people. And we've got really good skill. And uh, and again, I think our our offensive line, as we continue to go throughout the year, you know, will continue to um, uh, gel and uh, improve and. And uh, it goes through them as well. But philosophically, you know, it's a very aggressive system, you know, and quote unquote, take what the defense will give you. Yeah, there was a point in the game, I know, you know, it seems like being a head coach, it's a lot about managing adversity as you go along. It was going so well on offense, and then you have two, three and outs. What was that like for you as a head coach? Did you kind of just let Jeff and the staff play that out, or did you kind of – was that your point where you kind of give some input of, hey, let's let's do something like this? I mean, you're, you're talking nonstop. you either telling a great job or, like, why would we do that? Or I'm trying to also, again, free those guys up so you don't paralyze people, you know, and uh, you got to let – you know, things are going to happen. Sometimes the other team's – they just weren't a good call or something, you know. Guys are going to make mistakes too, so you you want to uh, inspect, but you don't want to over, uh, you know, manage it too. And uh, so they're wherever that uh, balance is. And uh, but you know we're on the same page during the course of the week, so game day is more of a reflection of how you know you're going throughout your week as well. So uh, you know. They don't need my advice necessarily, but you know I'm there to to try to help any way I can. It seemed like I mean the key there was they got physical on the next drive. Was yeah. That, I mean, was that kind of how you saw it play out? You just kind of you know in, you kind of impose your will a little bit to get going again. But yeah. Well, I think I think we showed early that we were able to run the the ball um, effectively early, and uh, you know how it is. Sometimes you can uh, you can get. Uh, uh, you see play callers, sometimes they get bored with it, or sometimes in the RPO world, the quarterback uh, might see something that he wants to pull it out of the belly. But, you know, being committed to that run game and running the football when they know you're going to run is a, is a tough thing to handle defensively. So um, I think imposing your will when you can is always a great thing, and, and you did see that, you know. And, again, like I said, the, that first – the. Uh, the the first quarter we we outgained them per play 17.6 per play to 3.6 
So um, both throwing and running the football, but uh, you know, game control matters, and you can you can get out, out of you know you can get in your own way if you're not careful. And so like three and outs. You know, a lot of uh, too many of those can you can you might be doing pretty good on the scoreboard, scoreboard, but you're not necessarily in a good position from a game control, which to me is important, really important. Yeah. Time for two more change uh, in the offensive line lineup going into today. Can you talk, kind of talk about what necessitated that and then how Tyler played? Yeah, um, I thought. Again, I thought those the guys that played today played played well. They did a, a great job, and we. Uh, um, one is going through some things that uh, we're trying to help him through and uh, off the field. And um, hopefully in the next uh, several days, hopefully we'll, we'll get that everything um, buttoned up. So uh, he's been practicing, and, uh, but uh, I was just working through some things. But I thought those guys did a nice job under the circumstances. And... Um, Again, there's, I know uh, Coach Bedenbo, um, There's he's going to be wanting some more, uh, you know, not satisfied with it. But I thought for the first game, I thought those guys did well. Tyler Guyton, his first start, uh, you know, as a collegiate player, you know. So that was cool to see as well. And um, good start for him. Brad, I assume you, I assume you got a game ball. Yeah, I did, actually did. Everybody in there got one. We gave it to <laughs> Joe and <laughs> Joe. I gave them to Joe and Joe for believing in me, and they, this is Oklahoma. They didn't have to hire me, and um, and, and I don't take that for granted at all. Uh, so we we gave them a game ball uh, after we gave one to every player and coach in there. Um, so again, we've talked about again this being Team 128, and uh, we want to celebrate success no matter how it looks, and um, but a special day, you know. Uh, for certainly uh, for our players in, uh, in 2022, uh, you know, and where we want to go as a program for, for me that, you know, this is going to be a date that we all remember, you know, for a long, long time. So uh, everybody got one. Sooner Scoop HD.